are thinking of this job the last couple of weeks. And we um, had a little scare. <laughs> I got sick around Christmas. Two years ago, I got sick around Christmas at the hospital, and all this stuff happened. So, but it wasn't COVID. It was just some heart virus that won't go away. <laughs> but I'm better, and I'm back. Um, so glad to see your faces. Uh, Claudia and them are maybe back home, but they weren't going to get home until late last night, she says. They wouldn't make it to church today. So I'm filling in for her. Came across a new word, and I have a fairly good vocabulary. I've always been a big reader, but this is a word that I looked at and I thought, I'm not for sure I know what it means. And Using context clues, I had an idea, but I was a little off the mark. And maybe some of you know this word, some of you may not. The word is ineffable. I-N-E-F-F-A-B-L-E, ineffable. And I thought, huh. It's used in this uh, devotional as ineffable joy. It's used by another person in this, well, this is from Guidepost, by the way, which I don't know if y'all get, I love Guidepost, um, about um, ineffable grace. And so I kind of thought I knew what it meant, and I looked it up, and it simply means something that is indescribable. There are no words. And so it's ineffable. So you may have to think of things that are that yeah. ineffable to you, or experiences you've had that were, you could describe as ineffable. <coughs> this is by Sarah Jim Canelli. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. I'm not sure. <coughs> I pondered the word inevitable, unable to describe or beyond expression. And when I was growing up, I was convinced that everything could be described. There was nothing that couldn't be harnessed with words. And every experience could be expressed through language, and saying you couldn't find the right words was just plain lazy. So this morning, I jumped on my bike and pedaled down the road it's a route, I've tra a route I've traveled hundreds of times since I was young. As I coasted down Jenny's Hill, named after the woman who lived there some 40 years ago, I took my feet off the pedals and straightened my legs, balancing and swerving and swishing down the bumpy hill as I'd done as a child. I felt inevitable joy. Perhaps it was being on the same road I grew up on, coasting down the same hill that gave me the feeling of being a kid again. That wonderful, wordless, wordless excitement of being both connected and carefree, young and old, all at the same time. I pedaled up the next hill faster and faster and tried to put the inevitable feeling of coasting down the hill and re-experience my childhood joy into words. But like God himself, like faith, there are just some things I still can't find the words for. I laughed at myself for being decades older and still trying to attempt the impossible. I let go of trying to capture the magic and let joy flow through me, coasting in the breeze. God of wonder, make the inevitable thank, thank you for maker of the inevitable. Thank you for innocent, childlike joy and a million other experiences that are too beautiful, too wonderful, too amazing to put into words. And I forgot to welcome the Crosby's, I'm sorry. <laughs> in the middle of reading that, so then the thought passed in my head. Glad you're here, so looking forward to what you have to share with us this morning. So as you go through the day today or this week, try to find those inevitable moments in your life and try to use that word in a new way. All right, so Sam will do the Lord's Prayer. 